morning. As Brother Jack pointed out, the lessons are on the first Sunday of each month. We're looking at the book of Acts, Christ's blueprint for his church. But I have chosen the theme verses dealing with this lesson to come from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 8 through 11. Brother Jack read to us. And think again for just a moment about what Paul says in that passage. He says, to me, though I am the very least of all saints, this grace was given. What grace? To preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light what is the plan of this mystery which was hidden in God for ages. For ages in God who created all things so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to the rulers and authorities in heavenly places. This was is in accordance with his eternal purpose, which he realized in Christ Jesus our Lord. So in that passage, Paul says that the church began in the mind of God. Before God said, let there be light. Through the Old Testament age, through the Old Testament history, the church was hidden. We see glimpses of it. We see glimpses of the sacrifice of Christ, for example, in the sacrifices of animals. But, Paul says, it has now been revealed this grace has been revealed to me, Paul says. Notice what the grace is. Why the grace was revealed to him. He says, number one, to preach. To the Gentiles, the unsearchable, the unfathomable. The word means it cannot be traced out. Which is a Christ. And number two, to bring to life. What is the plan of this mystery, which was hidden for ages in God? So those two infinitives, those two verbs, highlight for us the importance of the church, the importance of the teaching ministry, we might say, of the church of Christ. And so we are looking at, reading through, studying the book of Acts to see what is Christ's blueprint for the church. Now we in the churches of Christ are not trying to restore the first century church. We are not promoting the idea that we need to go back to a time where there is no electricity and men wore robes and everybody wore sandals. We're not trying to restore the first century church. What we are trying to restore is the church based on God's blueprint that was revealed in the first century. The blueprint is right here, not the first century. Christ's blueprint for the church is a church that is alive and well and practical and needed and relevant in every country, in every age, until Jesus comes back again. And so we see here in Ephesians chapter 3 that our responsibility as Christians is to preach and to teach the gospel of Christ, the unsearchable riches of Christ. And so we pick up, you might say, where Jesus left off, teaching the gospel. I invite you to turn to the book of Acts, chapter 1, it's page 909 in the Bible of the few, if you want to read, use that Bible, page 909, Acts chapter 1, Luke begins this book, volume 2, he says, to Theophilus. In the first book of Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus began to do, notice, and to teach until that day in which he was taken up from us after he had given commandments through the Holy Spirit 
that Jesus had risen from the dead. Appearing to his apostles for 40 days and speaking to them of things about the kingdom of God. And so Jesus is the master teacher. But when Jesus ascended back into heaven, he left the responsibility of teaching to his disciples. And when we become Christians, then we pick up that mantle, we accept that responsibility of preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so in verse 8 of that same chapter, Acts 2, Jesus tells his apostles, go into Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. When He will come on you, you shall be witnesses of Me. You see the idea of teaching there? You will be My witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the other most parts of the earth. And so this morning, I want us to think about our responsibility as Christians in trying to be the church of Jesus Christ that we need to preach and teach the gospel. And so we pick up with Acts chapter 2, which is the Apostle Paul, Apostle Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost, some 50 days after the Passover. Ten days after Jesus rose from the dead. So in Acts chapter 2, as we saw the first of you last month, the Holy Spirit came on the apostles in fulfillment of the promises from the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit guided them to reveal the pattern of the church. And in the process of that revelation, we see that the church is to preach the Old Testament. Peter's sermon begins actually in verse 14 of Acts 2. Notice what Peter says. He takes a stand with the other 11 apostles and raised his voice and declared to the Jews at the day of Pentecost, Men of Judea and all you who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give heed to my words. And that's how Peter begins his sermon. Listen. That is mankind's fundamental responsibility to the God of heaven. Listen. And so our responsibility as Christians is to teach. But not just teach anything. But to teach and preach the gospel. And here we see Peter begins, number one, by teaching the Old Testament. Notice in verse 17, verse 16. Peter begins by pointing from Joel chapter 2. This is that what was spoken of through the prophet Joel. He quotes Joel chapter 2. If you jump down to verse 25, Peter quotes from Psalm chapter 16. If you look down at verse 30, Peter quotes from 2 Samuel chapter 7. If you look down at verse 34, Peter quotes from Psalms 110. In other words, when Peter wants to talk to his audience about Jesus Christ, he begins by setting it in the context of the Old Testament. And so we today are, as Christians, are to teach and to preach the Old Testament. There are some 36 quotations in the book of Acts from the Old Testament, which shows us how important it is to teach the Old Testament. There are 39 books in the Old Testament, Genesis through Malachi. And if we want to understand the New Testament as best we can, we too have to go back and study the Old Testament. It is not given to us simply to make our Bibles thicker. The Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. He says, make every effort to show yourself a man approved of God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, notice, accurately dividing the word of truth. 
We jump over to chapter 3, beginning at verse 16. And Paul tells Timothy, all Scripture, from Genesis to Revelation, all Scripture is given through the inspiration of God. Inspiration means breathed out. This, the, the words of God were breathed out by God in the hearts of those men who wrote it down. And all Scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That, verse 17 says, that the man of God or the woman of God may be complete, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. And so if we want to be Christians, if we want to be followers of Jesus Christ, just as you also know, Peter understood that the miracles that Jesus performed during his lifetime were performed so that we can have confidence in his message. John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. The signs that Jesus performed were performed so that we could believe that Jesus is the Christ and through believing we can have salvation in his name. And so when Peter preached to the first non-Jewish audience, which was Cornelius and his family in Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, Peter begins with the life of Jesus. You know Jesus of that. How God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how that Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And so the church needs to preach and teach the life. Of course. So closely associated is Jesus with the gospel message that when the deacon from the church in Jerusalem went down to Samaria in Acts chapter 8 and preached Luke Christ and he preached Jesus. So to preach the gospel is to preach Jesus, to preach Jesus, to preach the gospel. Now I love jokes. I love anecdotes. I love history. I love reading psychology. One of the books Rachel gave me for Christmas. I haven't oh, read it yet, but it's the myth of happiness. I like reading books like that. I like reading warm, fuzzy stories from the Reader's Digest. Warm, fuzzy stories from the God books. But none of that is going to save our soul. Not a bit of it. it might feel good, but it's not going to save our souls. We've got to study the life of Jesus. We've got to teach and to preach the life of Jesus. And then after we study and preach the life of Jesus, the Apostle Peter, Apostle Paul, rather, writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, that there is no other foundation than that which is laid which he is Jesus Christ. And so we might enjoy reading all of these other stories and hearing about the lives of different people, biographies. But we can't build a life on jokes. We can't build our lives based on warm, fuzzy stories. We must build our life on Jesus Christ. And that's why the church has to preach and teach the life of Jesus. But now number three, which is Peter's second point. Notice that our preaching needs to deal with the crucifixion. This is a sad part of Christianity. Verse 23, this man, delivered over by the predetermined plan and poured on of God, you nailed to a cross by the hands of godless men and put him to death. There is a negative side to it. You see, you can't preach and teach the crucifixion unless 